When it comes to pursuing something that we love, we all want success and sometimes something deep within us just wants a simple answer. Just tell me the secret, the weird trick to push my photography to the next level. The hack that will allow me to go just a bit faster. The one small shortcut to get just a bit closer to where I want to be. And that's also part of the reason of why we want to own certain cameras and certain brands, right? It's a tool tried and tested by so many amazing photographers, people we respect, people who are better than us. And if they use it, it has to be good, right? And so we think if we just used that exact camera, that exact lens, we'll be one step in the direction closer to where we want to be. But is there truth in that? Does such a thing really exist? Well, that's exactly what I wanted to chat with you about today, because I think there is. You see, when looking back at my own journey, after the many years of learning on the job, having great photography teachers, doing many shoots, spending so much time and money on books, courses, and most importantly, looking deeply into the work and the footsteps of other photographers, people who I respect deeply, who have done so many amazing things throughout their careers, I wanted to see if there indeed was a true line across all these things, a point of consistency between not just the entire of my journey so far, but the journey of other people as well. Could I point to one thing, a single point of focus that connected the dots? A commonality, something essential that I wish I knew from the start. Could there be just one thing that I would say has given me the most progress so far in all my picture making, something that would still be relevant 10 years down the road, 30 years down the road, to anyone and everyone, regardless of where they were in their journey? Did such a thing really exist? Well, I realized that actually it did. Now this isn't something that I've heard someone else say and then now I'm just going to repeat it back to you. And it's not something that I've heard many, if not any other photographers, really emphasize strongly before. So it's not just a hack, it's not a weird trick, but it is a shortcut. Because I do believe that if you had two photographers, both with 10 years worth of shooting experience, if one person knew this from the start of his journey and the other didn't, the person with it would be leaps and bounds better as a photographer. And for me personally, it's something that has truly and consistently helped me out. Whenever I felt stuck, whenever I felt really down, like all my pictures were just meaningless, the days when I feel like a complete failure as a photographer, the one thing that saved me when I felt like never making another picture ever again. And not only did it get me out of those dark periods when my journey in photography could have just ended, but it also effortlessly took my picture making to greater and greater heights. It allowed me to make pictures that I could have never imagined that I would have been able to make. Now it might sound like I'm hyping this up to sell you some legendary photography masterclass, but I'm not here for your money. I'm not here to ask you to sign up for some mailing list and I'll send you the ebook. I will ask you to subscribe, but only if you want to, but whether or not you do, Today, I'm going to share it with you with as much detail as I can, with as much honesty as I can. And the only desire that I have with this is to simply hopefully help you out. So here it is, the one thing that has done all these things for me, that I've seen in every amazing photographer, and even outside the world of photography, musicians, guitarists, singers, everyone who has created compelling work has experienced this to differing degrees. And that is, the idea of exploration. Now, when I say exploration, I don't mean go out there into the world, go find some new place that you have never been before, go explore an abandoned building or go buy plane tickets to some remote area. That's fine too, but that's not what I mean. And I also don't mean the exploration of physical objects, like trying to explore new film stocks, trying new cameras, new lenses. Those things have its place, but when I say exploration, what I really mean is the exploration of photographic ideas. Here's what that looks like. I remember this so distinctly like it was just yesterday. I was at a place in my photography where I felt like I was just at a dead end. You see, I was around 10 years in to being a working photographer. And if you have had intense on-the-job training, you've had all your pictures brutally critiqued over and over, you've had the craft of photography drilled into you by someone who is far more experienced than you, and you finally pass the test, and you're put in the front lines. And from that point, 
you still continue making pictures almost every day for 10 more years inside and outside of work. After a certain point, lighting, exposure, composition, framing, perspective, all those things, they just become a given, right? It's just the baseline the bare minimum. And so I was at that place where I felt like I had a decently strong grasp with the craft of photography. I've been to enough shoots to know that I could show up for a job and the skill side of things was just not an issue at all. In fact, everything felt pretty easy. Now it's not like I had some huge ego or I think I'm some amazing photographer. I wasn't making the best pictures known to men, far from that. But if you've gotten a sense of mastery in whatever field that you are in, you'll know exactly what I mean. Past a certain point, the skill aspect of things is just a given, a threshold that you cross, after which it's just a matter of refining and you then work out from that position of skill. And if you keep going from that point, on and on and on, past a certain point, things can become feeling a bit dry. And so that was where I was. And I remember being at that place, feeling like I've squeezed everything there was out of photography, feeling like I hit a dead end, I hit a wall. And I remember this distinct, intense feeling of where in the world do I go from here? What left was there to do in this medium? Was it time to leave? But what saved me was a question. And I remember this so clearly. I had just showered. I was about to go to bed. The lights in my bedroom were already switched off. So it was really dark. And a question came up from within. And that question was, what would it look like to make a picture of a sensation? Of what it physically feels like to be alive, to be conscious, to be existing in a space, aware of everything around me? Could I make a picture of the physical sensations, of the space that I'm in, of what it feels like to be alive in that space, of not just recording objects in isolation, of not just making good pictures, a good composition, but recording a view, my view, the view of a conscious, living, breathing person. Could I somehow record that? And if so, could my pictures convey that? Beyond shapes and lines and forms, what you see with your eyes, could my pictures communicate something deeper? Now I could go more into that, but that's a whole nother video on its own. Because whether or not that attempt is successful has to do with communication. And it really depends on the subjectivity of the viewer, where the person is seeing the picture, when they're seeing it, what mood they're in, the context set up around that picture. But for the sake of this video, it's not so much what I explored, but the idea of exploration itself. Because that one simple question and the exploration of that concept unlocked so many things from me. From that initial idea, things began unfolding. The next question was, could I explore not just the physical sensations of a space, but emotional sensations as well? Tension, exhaustion, grief, brokenness, joy, comfort, peace, revelation. Could I make a picture about exploration itself? Slowly but surely, one thing led to the next. And that curiosity of questions, of unsolvable thoughts, the exploration of those things cascaded on and on and on, almost endlessly. It's like you're walking down a hall with many doors to many rooms. And each time you open a new door inside that room, there are more doors to more rooms and it just goes on endlessly. Now, the specific things that I explored, those things might not be what really fits you. So you might not be interested in the exploration of the physical sensations of a space. But that's also the beauty of photography as a medium. There is so much freedom and an endless sense of possibilities within personal exploration and expression that you can go down whatever path that genuinely excites you. Maybe you're interested in geometry, in lines, how shapes and forms influence the the picture plane and how the organization of those things alters visual expression. Start there. Or maybe you're interested in cars. I might not be very interested in cars, but if you are, then when you follow that sense of love that was first already somehow put within you, you would then go on to make pictures of cars that I or nobody else could ever make because we are not you. And you can really explore anything. Maybe you're fascinated with your house, your cat your loved ones, the view from your car, the possibilities are endless. And here's the amazing part. That's just the start. 
we've been only talking about thoughts from within. From there, you can begin exploring other people's works as well, other people's thoughts, their curiosities, looking at what has come before you, finding out for yourself which photographers, which bodies of work deeply resonate with you. And that's when you realize that the things that you have been exploring that came from within, other people have been exploring those things as well, but them with their own slant and you with yours. Because we bring to this the entirety of our life experiences, our our history, our story, our beliefs, our values. And as long as you keep true to those things, they'll inevitably give you your own sense of flavor, your own sense of style. And you'll realize that, hey, other people might be exploring similar things as well, but they have their own sense of distinct flavor, different to my own. And from there, you'll begin exploring not just your curiosities, but other people's as well, incorporating their thoughts, seeing how they line up with your own, building upon certain things, throwing out certain things, selecting things that genuinely fascinate you, adding them to your toolbox, but with your own flair, your own sensibilities. And here's what that looked like for me. Say, for example, with Friedlander, you see things like interposition, how he plays with overlapping forms. You might think to yourself, hey, I've never really experienced that before. Let's explore that in my picture making for a while. Then maybe you come across a beautiful book of pictures made by children and you go, oh man, there is so much casualness to this, a purity. What about it makes it feel so casual? How do I incorporate that sense of looseness, of freedom, of play into my own picture making. Then opposite to that, you see Stephen Shaw's work and you go, oh man, I never knew formality in picture making could combine so nicely with almost mundane everyday scenes. If I were to take those concepts and apply that towards subject matter that I really care about, what would it look like? On and on and on. And it's like you're expanding your photographic vocabulary. The more you explore, and you're able to use those new words in your own way. So it's this constant exploration of questions, of fascinations, not imposed on you by other people, but arising from within yourself that effortlessly intrigues you. And from there, not just exploring questions from within, but also exploring questions posed by other photographers as well. Those two aspects of curiosity from within and curiosity from outside, they synergize and they become this beautiful, intertwining, constantly changing melting pot of photographic possibilities. They form the path that keeps unfolding in front of you as you put one foot in front of the other that gives you your unique journey, your distinct voice. And if you're feeling down at a low point in your photography, which I do a lot of the time. Start by asking yourself this, what genuinely fascinates you? Beyond just making good pictures, beyond good compositions, beyond chasing nice light, what are you interested in? What intrigues you? What excites you? What are you curious about? What do you really care about? Is there something, some subject matter, a place, an idea, anything at all, that pulls you in that direction? Can you remember a situation in the past where just standing there, looking at something, making a picture of it, everything in you just felt effortlessly alive? Start there and keep taking small baby steps from that starting point, opening new doors. You know, sometimes when you open a door in the room, it's a dead end. And I've had many of those as well. When you experience that, just pause, retrace your steps and move forward again. This time in just a slightly different direction. And if you just keep going, one day you'll look back and you'll see the beautiful journey that you've undertaken. And you'll find the pictures that only you were able to make. If you found that helpful, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to have a chat with you there. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video.